like when, when I heard the story about Marcelo Lucero being killed, it didn't surprise me at all. Because a, a week earlier, I had been attacked by a joke. A week earlier, and it made me think like it could have been me. You know, I was attacked by a different group of uh, teenagers. You, you would treat a dog bad, you, you would treat you know, an animal bad. Racism, I feel like people treat other people bad um, because of their differences. It's not right. It's just not right. It, it made me feel small. It made me feel like I didn't have anyone to go to. I felt closed in, trapped, with no outlet. I didn't feel good. I felt like I was nothing. I felt like, like why am I here? One time I was riding my bike and then I saw this group of uh, like young kids. Uh, they came and pulled right next to me. And I was going in the opposite direction of the, of the road. So they told me to go ahead and I, as I was crossing the street, they, they, they didn't make the U-turn. They pulled right into the street and they hit me with the car. So uh, they, I flew up, up in the air. I landed on the, on, the, on, the, on the concrete and I hurt my back. And so uh, they got out of the car. I remember clearly there was four, four of them. And uh, they pulled out baseball bats and they beat me up. And so they, beat, uh, they uh, hurt my knees really bad. Since then I've been having problems with my knees. And they pulled my, uh, tore my teeth out. Uh, and I remember clearly one of them uh, put his feet on my mouth and he said, uh, you should go back to where you belong, dirty Mexican. is judging without knowing. Just, you know, judging people and before you get to know them. That's what prejudice is. It's like you're prejudging someone without actually knowing them or getting to know them. So you have like these thoughts in, in your mind um, of what a person should be. And I think people judge based on what they don't know, what they, what they aren't accustomed to. So in some ways, I've always faced people looking, staring, avoiding, kind of walking really big and wide around me, and uh, things like that all through my life, growing up and everything. It's like they're, they're uncomfortable. They don't know what to do, what to say. They, they're not sure, OK, she walks, she talks, she kind of looks like me, but she looks different. Uh, you know, what is this all about? And so people have a tendency to avoid those that are different or they have uncertainty, or just basically makes them feel uncomfortable. Why? Who even knows? Because it's like, none of these people, I, I would bet my life on it, none of these people would have walked up to me unless I was on TV. I would have just been that little person that you could, you could see it. You don't even have to look at it, but you can see all the eyes watch you from one end of the you know, airport, walking through, you know, getting to your gate, or through the grocery store, through the mall. I truly did not understand it from them because to me, I was like, what's the problem? <laughs> I really didn't see it. And, and, and I think there was just definitely something inside that said, you know what, you're still a good person. You still need to keep moving forward, regardless of these things that you are facing or these things that you are dealing with or your perceptions or whatever, or what other people are saying or throwing at you. There's still a next day. We got to get to wherever that point is. It's an adventure. Life's an adventure. You have learned and found out about someone who's different, has a disability or whatever they perceive of me. Now go out and now look at all the other people that maybe you were afraid of or didn't know or, or lack of information or avoided for whatever reason. And I basically think people are good people. This whole race thing, I, what gets me is how, how are you going to be mad at somebody because their skin is different than yours? I'm a Latin man, and, you know, growing up, people used to just say, you know, because of my skin tone, I didn't look like that. So even though I was that person, that I, that I, who I was, as far as being from the Latin culture, my mom's Puerto Rican and my dad's Dominican, they would just say, well, you're, you know, Caucasian. You're not really, you know, Spanish like that. So 
that's something that my throughout my whole life because of the way I looked that kind of determined who I was even though that's not really the case for me. I'm from um, Nigerian descent and there's like a common misperception in my culture that light skin is the is better. Mm -hmm. My parents have always told me like if you have to date somebody who's a different race it's always better to like bring somebody home who's lighter skin. I mean, even for my dad, who's really the easiest going guy ever, he has friends of so many different races. But once you talk about dating, it's just out of out of the question. You know, depending on what you look like may not be who you really are. You know, um, you may look a certain skin tone, you may be, you know, light as day, dark as night, but who's to say, you know, you know, who you really are unless I talk to you, communicate with you. What we have to accept is that we all have biases. Clearly, uh, people grow up in an environment that don't, uh, that they hear things, they learn things about other groups, other ethnicities, other religions, and then they act out on them. So with that, automatically becomes a those people versus us. Um, and certainly in economic times, uh, when school budgets are being voted down, uh, the blame becomes because of those people, whoever those people are. And I hate to, I feel those, the word those is almost like a four-letter word. Well, it's very difficult when uh, we do a whole presentation and we tell them this is against the law and we tell them no, 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 and then they go home and mom and dad say the hell with that. Those people are causing our problems. So, I would like to think that we are changing people. Um, I'm not quite sure of that when we still are the third most segregated county and we are still dealing with hate crimes on a regular basis. And the new generation, I've been doing this for 11, 12 years now. So, you know, I've gone through a generation of parents now. Kids were kids, now they're the parents and they're bringing the kids up and we're cycling through again the same thing. So I don't know if we're going to change it. I think we're making people aware of it. Um, yeah, I grew up in North Delta, Mississippi, a small, small town, Sledge, Mississippi, yeah. And it's not a lot of people, it's really not a lot of people. And the white people live on one side of the track and black people live on the other side. It's, I think I, I may have had one white friend, and, I, and she comes to mind so clear. Actually, I'm lying. One, two two white friends and one boy, he was half white. So, but they weren't really white. They, they I think they, their skin was white, but on the inside they were black because they were the most, uh, I want to say hood, but ghetto as people you could ever want to meet in your life, but they were funny and they were nice and they, they didn't believe in, in just color. I think that the ones that were white tried to fit in with us to make us feel better because they saw what it was like for us and they just wanted to be our friend. I remember a couple of white teachers but they never stayed for very long. In a black school when I was growing up you had teachers assistants or you had teachers that was trying to get their license or you had you know teachers that did have their license but didn't just didn't, didn't care. They were just doing it. It just didn't care. That, that made us feel like we couldn't achieve anything. Well, what's our purpose? That that would be the question. It's like, what's our purpose if we just here and they just passing us, pushing us through? It, it makes us think. Make it made me think that this is gonna happen for the rest of my life. They're just gonna stuff is gonna be handed to me because I didn't earn it. They just gave it to me and pushed me right through. That, that mess with your self-esteem, your pride, it beats you down as a person. And it makes you think that you can't achieve the smallest thing. And to other people, oh yeah, you know, college is no big deal. But to me as a lifesaver because I was always taught that I couldn't make it there. I was always taught that. Even my own mom said I wasn't gonna graduate from high school. Not 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 so much warm. I deserve better. It's like, I can do this. I can get this done. You know, it, life does not have to be just about race. It should not have to be, well, we're white and you're black, so we're smarter than you. 
it made me feel like we were equal now. Now we're on an equal playing field. So it's like, okay, what else can I do? Go to college, get education, read more, do something, reach out to somebody else. Even if, even if it's seeing somebody that said, just say hi, because you never know what type of impact you may have on that person. I felt like, um, I don't know, I was just, you know, you feel sort of like left out. Like, you know, you're like, hey, what about me? Like you have like this little voice like, hey, what about, but you actually don't say it. But you know, you just kind of feel like, you know, you left out. Um, I don't know, you feel lonely. It's not like a happy place to be. So. Um. I know what's going on. I know I, been taught to read people's actions, their, their body language. So it's not a surprise to me when I, I know when somebody doesn't like me, I can feel it. It depends on the situation how I feel because in some circumstances people are so just blunt with their racism, you can, you're not even offended, you're just shocked. You don't know how to respond to it sometimes. It, it's just it's obscene, so you, f you, feel, you feel frustration. Sometimes you feel, you know, a little bit depression. Sometimes, it, it, again, it's just a situation. You don't really know how to respond until you are given a certain situation. It just made me, ha, really? Okay, I'm gonna try harder. So I didn't, I didn't like it, and I wanted to prove them differently. Well, I felt hurt. Like, I couldn't believe it was happening, and I knew it existed, but not to me, so I was kind of shocked with that. I got smuggled in a, in a van, in a dashboard of a van, at four years old. You know, I grew up, and everybody just looked down upon me. You know, everybody, everybody from teachers, I got left back. Now, as a little kid, I thought about it and I said, wow, you know, I might not be good enough in school. You know, I might be a little dumb. You know, I never thought it was, it was actually the other people. You know, but as, as I went through school and I started going through classes, I started getting straight A's after that. So then I figured it out. When I went to sixth grade, I was still illegal. I only had my permit to be here. My parents fought and fought and they actually got the Nicara Act that they supposedly gave out to Salvadorians because of refugees that came into the country. And under those laws, we got a residency. When I was in sixth grade, I saw this Marine walk into my school in full uniform. And I looked at him and I saw this just stature of grand, you know, something so above normal, almost heavenly to me. And it caught my eye. And I said, you know what? This country has given me the opportunity to prove myself, not just, you know, in the classroom, but in life itself. I could make something of myself here. You know, why not give something back? And I felt that it was my obligation, more than anything in this world, to serve this country. So I did. When we was in Baghdad, on the way to Baghdad, we had to build the bridge. It was like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. We had a firefight. We had incoming fire. We started firing back. You know, after a while, everything cooled down. Morning comes around. There are dead bodies everywhere. You know, they were Iraqis. Regardless of what they were trying to do, you know what? It's a dead body respected. Guys would pull out their guns, put it to the guy's mouth, and take a picture of it, like a trophy. It angered me. It really angered me. Even though they were my brothers, and they were there with me the whole time, I just couldn't stand it. And I told the guys, like, listen, back up. Why? Why, they're dead Iraqis. It don't matter. They're worthless. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're a human being. Hey, they're not that much different. You get a cut, you bleed red. They get a cut, they bleed red. What's so different? You never want to be the weaker one. So, you know, sometimes when you're scared, 
and you don't want to lose and you don't want to lose the battle like who's whose race is superior you want to say you know what well my race is better than yours because maybe you're just afraid that you don't want to be the weak one sort of like um high school or middle school mentality like you have your several different cliques and it's just always you know even with like you know during gym a game of dodgeball who's gonna get picked last <laughs> you know nobody wants to be that last person because that person is usually the short fat kid who can't always run and isn't the best at everything so nobody wants to be that person China itself, the actual name, if you translate it literally, is Central Kingdom. So it's like we think we're the best race, we're the highest, and that we are far more advanced than everybody else. So we hold ourselves to a much higher standard than to everybody else. So I think that's mostly what we like, mostly what it stems from that we think we're so much better than everybody else when some of us really aren't that great. People fear what they don't understand. So, you know, the fact that if one person doesn't want to understand other people, then I don't think prejudice will ever, you know, go away. You know, we, it, 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 it doesn't take one person to stop it. Stop this, it takes everybody. I think that people do use clothing and other things such as grades and um, positions yeah. as armor to represent who they are. And that's not the case. I don't think it should represent you know, who you are. I think it should be more so of what you've accomplished. If I never opened my mind, I wouldn't have some of my best friends. Like, I wouldn't have them in my life, or I would have I would have never learned from them. Just talk, just having to sit down and talk about why, you know, there's so much hatred. You know, is it because of, you know, what happened to you in your life? Was there another person in, in your life that 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 was actually the same descent from me that did you wrong or you know just have just just to talk about it and sometimes you know you might not reach an agreement but if you know what that person's coming from you can have a better understanding than just not talking to them at all and just being angry I started thinking about well what is it that I do every day that might be helping this go go along what can I actually do to stop it what one thing that we can do is, you know, just have have a sit down and, and just have a talk. But this sit down will have to consist of the three billion people in the world because each and every person has to be at this table, at this table, this humongous table of uh, to sit down and kind of give their own personal opinion and outlook on how racism can be diminished permanently from this earth.